Hey, today I just want to show you how I captured and edited this, this short monologue from Maxine and also where I think improvements can be made and just my workflow so you can see exactly how I did it and what I did and maybe it helps you in the future as well. We're also going to go through Cascades in betweening, which was a, a big help for this one as well. So actually I had this monologue in November 2024 already and I did follow the whole process and I started uh, edit, editing it with uh, unbaking because for me that was the, the best way for a character not to look a bit robotic. So I played around with it um, and eventually I just gave up. I was like this doesn't work. My biggest issue was this little twirl that she did. So with Dollars Mono, you can decide exactly how you want to capture it. Do you want to capture desk mode? Do you want to capture it just like standing up? And do you want like an action capture? So the actor can move and it will capture the movement as well. So because we can't see the feet uh, of Maxine over here, it's difficult for the program to, to do like an action capture because it can't really place where the character is. Uh, the problem with desk mode is desk mode uh, as the name quite explains is assumes you are at your desk so obviously you're usually sitting still so it captures like the arm movements or hand movements uh, and the facial movements and just uh, the top body movements uh, which also wouldn't really quite work here because obviously she's, she's uh, walking around and in uh, the standing mode um, also doesn't really work because uh, we can't see the feet so the dollars mono wants to place the character and yeah, I'll show you now exactly what happens when we do that as well so it wasn't really working for me. With Cascadus latest update with the in-betweening function I was curious if I can reattempt that and also because unpacking wasn't working for me I was also curious to see if Aaron's keyframe reduction would work uh, better. So your first step always is to uh, edit a video in whichever editing software you use just to get exactly what you need and then we import that into Dollars Mono. So as you can see here I'm using the standing feature. This was my first capture and then I did a second capture in desk mode. And then you'll see obviously the um, she is not she's not moving all over the place in uh, desk mode. The idea was to incorporate both of these uh, into Cascadeur so that uh, I can get the best of both worlds. So I eventually decided on the action shot and uh, the desk shot because I was really looking for the, the tool. I recorded both, the action and the, the desk animation. I exported that back into FBX files, which I can then use in, in Cascada and where I was going to edit from there. So I did the retargeting, everything works. Now I want to put it over my skeleton, my metahuman skeleton for the model I'm going to use. So I then import where she's standing uh, still, the, all the data there where she's standing still and I then import all the data where um, she's moving just to get a more like human-like feature or just to get a, a feature, yeah, just to get a more human feature so she doesn't stand absolutely still. She's got a little bit of sway. To get an accurate idea of where I misplaced my animations, I always import the video, uh, video reference. Then I try to match up my video reference with the, with the, with the animation. I also then use the keyframe reduction method to take out unnecessary keyframes. And we've got interpolation to fill in the rest, but it's just the less keyframes there are, especially for these long animations, the easier it is to work with. With all my captured data imported into one file, this is where I now um, splice it together just to get the correct result. Uh, this is me splicing it together. I then edit it a little bit, make sure everything gets lined up. Um, I then add autoposing to the feet to make sure she stands correctly on the, the floor. And then I start my whole cleanup process. So you will see with a few things that I actually take out keyframes and I use cascaders in between. So for me, this is very helpful because I am an amateur animator. It's sometimes difficult for me to get the correct like speed and, and twists on the animation. So I use the in-betweening now to just get a feel of what it should be. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. And then I let in-betweening take over to just place her in a, in a good position or just, just to place her in a more natural position. I then edit what, it, yeah, I then edit the limbs 
uh, how I feel is necessary. And I do that with all the sections that uh, requires a little bit of a, a human intervention. I then transferred the animation over to MetaHuman on a character I wanted to use. And here she is. So here's me just doing a test to see if everything works correctly. Uh, the idea was uh, was to use actually Dollars Mona's facial capture, but because this character sits so far back, the program couldn't pick up her face. So I went with with Unreal's audio to MetaHuman feature. So I used that, and the results actually came out quite nice as well. I did receive a comment. I did receive a comment from Lucky Dev regarding the meshes I supplied a while ago, saying that if you uh, import your animation into Unreal it actually stretches the, the character. Uh, when I tested it last year, this wasn't the case, but I do see it is the case right now. I tried to find a workaround there and I'll show you what I mean of the stretching. The animation works, it all looks looks good. It's just the neck and like the torso just gets stretched tremendously. Um, so I try to find a workaround there. It looks like the issue is with the base mesh because now you can import that directly onto a base mesh so i've messed around with that for quite a while and then i also tried this audio to meta you want to try to just uh, make it look a little bit more natural just remove sections where it didn't actually quite work so nice i also wanted to add clothing to a meta human but as you know as well clothing is not exactly a we don't have a big options of clothing using MetaHuman, but you can buy it from a, a third party. And I actually did find quite uh, like a dress that would suit my, my animation. After that, I decided, let me just try, try and troubleshoot this whole uh, base mesh uh, or base skeleton for, for MetaHuman. I tried to retarget my um, MetaHuman. I did not get that to work. I then decided, you know, I'm gonna use it as is, but the the long neck and the torso just did not look right. I then did something I, I, I didn't think would have worked, but it did work, is I actually retargeted my animation on Unreal's mannequin. I think I used the, the UE5 Quinn model. I retargeted on there, uh, and then I retargeted back uh, onto the base skeleton, which I then used for my, um, for my character, my tall character. So it's me comparing just the back um, and it looks like posture is the only difference there. So I was happy enough to use that. And then I put my whole scene together. Uh, I also saw that there was still some refinement I needed to do on my animation, which I did there as well uh, in Unreal itself. Easy enough, you just want to take out a few keyframes and then Unreal also has got like a little interpolation thing happening in the background and that was good enough for me. I then went searching for sheep in my uh, fab collection and I see that have one and it was actually stylized as well. So I had an idea of what I wanted to do in the scene. Uh, I just needed some which you can sit on so I went with this, this cannon, uh, made it fit there. And this is me just cleaning up the animation as far as I can. Um, and also trying to find a way where she looks directly at the camera, unfortunately I did not uh, get it right either, so I just did it manually. And then here is my failure at uh, rigging a sheep. And then I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna repeat the animation and I decided just to use a skeleton to uh, get the sheep to move his head a bit. And that's what I did there. And I moved that in and then I did some cleanup and then I rendered it out. At this, this point in time, I was very happy with the way it came out. Uh, the only differences I would make is I think, especially this section here where she moves her shoulders a lot, um, I would actually just force it to stand still. Uh, but the rest I'm actually quite quite happy with. Um, quite happy with the way it came out. Uh, this part where she picks up a dress, I might have actually just taken taken out in the end. And as you can see on the her left hand, she's touching a chair there, and in my videos she's touching nothing. So. I uh, probably should have put it next to her as well, like next to her body, but I'm very happy with the way it came out. I hope this helps you with your workflow and also just to show you the power of in-betweening. If you want to make uh, videos like this yourself, um, I've got discount codes with both Dollars Mono and Cascade that you can use. The links are below. And this animation is also going to be available for you to download, use, test out whatever you would like to do of it if you just want to see how exactly it looks like in cascade it is there for you to download 
Uh, if you do reuse this for your own projects, please send me a video of it. I'd really love to see it. And yeah, that's that. So thanks for watching this far and yeah, good luck with your projects. Have a great one. Bye.